whisk. A whisk is basically a blender, except it lacks all of the power and you have to do everything by hand, which is why I decided to call this little experiment of mine whisk, not quite a blender. This is game number 12 for the 20 games challenge. You may be wondering though why I made blender for the 20 games challenge, and that is a fair question. The truth is I was not trying to make blender in Godot, I was trying to make a boat racing game. Uh, I think there is no explanation needed here. Pretty clear how I could have gotten mixed up on that and accidentally made this instead of this. Okay, maybe I should go back and start this video at the very beginning. One year ago, I made Mario Kart in Godot. And despite the cheerful tone in that video, this was not a project I was particularly proud of. It didn't turn out great, and that was compounded by the fact that I was planning on making a racing game for my first real game of my first Steam release. That game was canceled, by the way, because of scope creep. But at the time, it was very important that I figured out how to make a vehicle controller. So I decided to go back for another round and make this game, Hydro Thunder. Uh, this was a arcade cabinet boat racing game, not something I was particularly connected to, but it turns out there aren't a lot of boat racing games to choose from, and I didn't want to do another car racing game, so I was going to do this. I made a quick level and started working on the vehicle controller for this game. I thought it would be cool to make a shader that actually animated the water and then also link that into the physics system. I saw a couple interesting videos on how to do that, so I was going to implement that on my own. I started by putting my boat on a flat plane. The next thing I did was add a gravity force um, in the opposite direction to represent buoyancy so the boat could bounce. That didn't work, so I tried to add more layers, and that didn't work, so I tried a bunch of other things. Eventually, I realized the problem. I was not complicating things enough. So instead of having just the force pushing on the boat, I added a bunch of individual floats that the forces would push on, and this in theory would level the boat and keep it from flipping over. In theory, that's what it would do. In, okay, one more try. Okay, so I also heard online that there are some issues with the physics engine. Clearly, I'm doing everything right and Godot is the problem. So I ended up doing some experiments to make myself feel better, I guess. I don't actually know why I did this. Uh, let me check the notes. Yeah, okay. It's, it says I trust the physics engine after this, so whatever. Uh, we now trust the physics engine. I'm going to head back in and try to make the boat do good things. And uh, okay. At this point, I realized I don't know how to use the Godot physics engine. I don't know if I'm using it correctly. And my best bet is to just give up on this project and make pinball instead, which is a physics engine heavy thing. Once I'm done with that, I'll know what I'm doing and I'll be able to come back. Well, that was another year done. I somehow managed to finish this video before the year ended, so I have two days left. A sane person might take a break, and a wise person might invest this time into next year's projects, but I thought it would be fun to try something new. Last year, I started working on a Hydro Thunder remake. This was the only game in the 20 Games Challenge I ever failed to complete, and I was going to come back later and work on this. The problem, one, the game isn't working, but the other problem is I wasn't really that committed to this game in particular. But there was a game I used to play on Miniclip back in the day called Need for Madness, and this game is completely awesome. It's so much fun if you've never played it. This is one of those games that is trying so hard to be cool that it actually succeeds. This thing is awesome. So I love this game and I think it would be really fun to make a game that is similar to this one. Something else that's had that I thought was really interesting is a vehicle editor. This is not a great system though because you actually have to manually place points. But it got me thinking, wouldn't it be fun to make a vehicle editor? So that's what we're going to do today. This is going to be super quick and I am going to get this done before the new year and then I'm going to actually start working on my actual game. So that turned out as well as you'd expect. I am now in the new year. This took a lot longer than I wanted, but I think it's worth continuing with, mainly because I want to use this for another project, so it's not a waste of time if I'm working towards something else. So I'm going to be continuing with this. What I have right now is a plane that I can put a point on. So as I move with the mouse wheel, uh, the planes will rotate. I can use the X, Z, and C keys to move between the X, Y, and Z planes, move those planes, put a point 
point on those planes, and it is drawing a triangle. Now, you notice the triangles are only rendering on one side. That's because of culling. Typically in 3D graphics, only the outside of something is visible. Thankfully, there's a checkbox to show both sides, so you don't need to worry about which way things are being drawn, because that would be a pain to try to determine what the user's trying to do. So now I have triangles on both sides. Uh, the next thing is to save these points and add them to the mesh. And with that, I pretty much have a basic editor. So I added a few materials you can switch between and now I technically have something I can make a boat with. So here is my boat. I'm gonna add a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. I forgot to document them anywhere, so I don't really remember which keys did what, but it was really nice for the five minutes that I remembered what buttons did what and how to jump around and turn things on and off and toggle mirrors and symmetry and all that cool stuff. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is draw a grid to make this look a lot better. I just think having a semi-transparent grid like this is a lot nicer for being able to figure out where all your points go. Oh, by the way, remember when we disabled calling like 20 seconds ago? Yeah, that looks like crap now. Um, it's okay. If we just maybe change the rotation when it's mirrored, then we can pretend this is intentional. Honestly, I have no idea why this is happening. So if you know, let me know. And with that, I am basically done with the vehicle editor. There's a bunch of little things I didn't really show, like I now can modify points instead of just clicking them to create new ones. I can select existing points and add stuff to them. I can change the material color as I go, and basically all the things to be able to make a cool looking boat. So that is it for the vehicle editor right now. I really need to get back to the actual game, but honestly, I am just so tired of this project. I'm going to take a little break and I'll be back in a few minutes when I feel like I have the mental capacity to try to tackle that physics engine problem again. This brings us back to the present day. It has been another five months or so since I worked on this project. And you might wonder, Matt, why didn't you just make the video and be done with it? Well, unfortunately, I didn't feel like this project was in a state where it was really worth sharing. And so I decided, you know what? I am making tutorials now. I might as well sit down and read the documentation on how to do the world environment node and make this look really, really good. Uh, I figured I would release this video after I release a tutorial on how all that stuff works. Alternatively, I thought I might just make a tutorial on how 3D bodies work and then finish the actual boat racing part. And so you can create a boat and then drop it in a world. And so I had these great ambitions holding me back from just giving up and moving on. Nobody wins 100% of the time and sometimes it's worth just taking the L and moving on. So I decided that's what we're going to do. I don't want to completely leave it like this. So a couple things I want to add. I figured at the very least I could model a boat dealership environment for this little scene where you're making your boat. I couldn't find a lot of those online, but I did find a bunch of high-end car dealerships. So I put together some stock photos and I figured I would be done with this project when I got this finished. Of course, I then remembered I kind of hate 3D modeling and I didn't get very far into this before I gave up as well. Uh, this took me another two months before I realized maybe I shouldn't be doing this. But I still like the idea of having some sort of background. I could not find a car dealership, but I went on to Polyhaven, which has a lot of free high quality assets and found an airport, which sounds cool enough. I, let's see, HDR, EXR, HDRs have something to do with lighting or whatever. I don't know because I didn't make that tutorial. So I'm going to download the JPEG instead. <laughs> um, we will save this image. Then I'm curious if I just take a sphere and I shove this on top of it. Everything freezes. I don't know. <laughs> oh, there we are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We are now making things in an airport. Okay, I think that was what this needed. So all we need to do is now make something beautiful for the thumbnail, and we will call that a win. Yep, I am definitely going to be successful in the world of 3D games, I have a feeling. And that right there is the Godot logo, modeled in Whisk, made in Godot. I think the, yeah, the shading doesn't really help here. So I'm going to see if I can actually turn that off. Uh, just turn off the shadows in the world environment node and maybe bump the brightness up. I don't know. Uh, tell me if that's better or worse. 
Either way, I think that's where we're going to leave it here. I don't know what that final count came out to with the scope creep and all the things I didn't do that I was planning on doing, but hey, I made a thing, and like I said, sometimes it is worth calling it good enough and moving on. I will be coming back with a actual game in the future, so I hope this was at least interesting, if not entertaining. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Adios. Yeah.